Some people hate whiskey. If you want to hear the top six reasons people might hold that opinion, then stick around. Pretty girl, before we get started, we have to say a very quick thank you to our patron members. We have a Patreon out there, and some of these members support at a very high level just to make sure that this content keeps getting created for free for you, the viewer at home. And so, if you're not a patron, thank one because we wouldn't be able to do it without them. So, uh, let's get into the video disclaimers. First off, before we get too deep into the video disclaimers, explain to the people what our shirts are. Um, I went through a phase where I made us t-shirts as Halloween costumes because we're not really costumey people. Um, and you are the life of the party everywhere we go. Whoop, whoop. And I'm usually in a corner hiding from the people. So I'm kind of a buzzkill. Yeah, she, she does get a little bit uh, worried. And yeah. so sometimes you have an idea um, it may not be the best idea you've ever had, but it sounds like a fun time. And Lindsay will shoot it down. In the moment, Lindsay might come along and say, hey, let's let's not do that. Yeah. So uh, our our friends think our shirts are funny because they, they see us in action. Where I'm like, yes, let's go do all the things. And then she's like, no, no, no we're not. not doing that. Uh, so we thought it was appropriate for this episode, uh, since a lot of what influences how you feel about whiskey has to do with your outlook, personal experiences from the past. So we're gonna have some disclaimers on here. And uh, one thing that we wanna let everyone know at home is that it is not our aim to make everyone on earth a whiskey drinker. Um, we totally understand that um, there are some people who shouldn't drink, uh, but we, we also believe that whiskey is meant to bring people together and since that's one of our missions in life, uh, we do educational pieces that might encourage people uh, to get involved in the whiskey enthusiast community who it's not a bad decision for them to do so. So it's not going to cause any major heart, health impact. It's They don't have any dependency issues that they're fighting. And so just please know that before we get started. So let's jump into the the reasons why somebody might hate That's whiskey it. uh what's what's the first one pretty girl um when you haven't tried it properly yes right i.e shots shots yes um, there are a lot of people whose first whiskey experience was uh drinking it at a uh, pace that probably makes it so you don't enjoy the flavor um and also it can be a little bit shocking to your palate because keep in mind Higher proof spirits are, um, I mean, they're kind of caustic <laughs> to your palate. And so we would recommend that you kind of ease your way into whiskey. If you're not experienced with it, um, what are some things that they can do to try to, you know, make it so it's not so shocking when they first get exposed to whiskey? Um, well, I mean, you can ease your way in with like lower proof spirits. Mm -hmm. um, you know, don't start off with a hazmat. You know, maybe try it in cocktails. Mm. Um, that's a really good way. Remember when we did that episode about how to get your significant other into whiskey? Yeah. That was like the number one answer is yeah. individuals would find a cocktail that their significant other liked and they would make it boozier and boozier over time and mm -hmm. they would, you know, eventually get used to it. Trial by fire. Um, but there's, <laughs> there's also no shame in using ice and water to... Yeah. Um, cooler uh, spirits, it actually uh, re reduces the intensity of the flavor. And so ice will uh, take the intensity of flavor down enough that it might make it more palatable. And of course, water dilutes it and that will reduce the intensity of the impact of the spirit on your tongue. Um, so those are all things that we'd recommend if you've if you, if you got exposed to whiskey in shots or some other way that's not a pleasant way to drink it, try some other ways. So yeah. what's the uh, second reason somebody might hate whiskey? I, like only having tasted whiskey. Whiskey, yes. Uh, what's what's probably the number one example of, of whiskey that people think is whiskey that's really probably not whiskey? Fireball. Fireball. 
I'm not sure if Pitbull devastated uh, the whiskey world <laughs> with that song, or if he got a lot of people started off on a on a journey, or maybe everything in between. But uh, Fireball whiskey is a cinnamon flavored whiskey, and there are others that are in that same category, like Southern Comfort. Mm. Um, and a lot of them are in a category of spirits called spirit whiskey. And spirit whiskey uh, might have the word whiskey on the label, but it only has between 5 and 20% whiskey in it. And the rest are other blending materials, you know, colorings, flavorings, things like that. Antifreeze. Um, oh, yes. Uh, and so that, uh, her, her comment, um, if you grew up in the South, you might have heard that you have to be careful when you're changing the coolant out in your car because antifreeze uh, is something that dogs are attracted to and they will drink it and it can kill them. And that's because there is a compound, an antifreeze, that is also used in some chemicalized sweeteners that uh, it's kind of like a brain chemical and it makes you taste something that's sweet. Um, but uh, a lot of these you know, flavored whiskeys use those chemicalized sweeteners. And so what you need to know about that is that uh, that compound, when ingested in large quantities, can make you not feel well. Mm -hmm. And so some people think they hate whiskey because they had a really bad experience the first time they spent all night shooting fireball shots and they had the worst hangover of their life, but it was actually because they got exposed to a chemical that shouldn't have probably been uh, consumed in that quantity. So um, what can people do that have had that experience? Um, to to kind of expose themselves to a different side. Um, I, you know, I think it's a good idea to drink your bourbon straight, right? Mm -hmm. Drink straight bourbon or rye or um, you know, like a finished option. Just try sipping it so you can enjoy the flavor. Right, and straight bourbon is a category uh, that is kind of a consumer protection law in the United States. And you know that it has no adulteration. There's no additives. There's no chemicals that have been added. And that will give you a more, um, you know, natural experience with whiskey if you haven't tried that before. Um, so what is the next thing that might make people hate whiskey? Had a bad experience from drinking when you were younger. Yeah, uh, this is a very common one that we hear. Um, I have even my own mother. Um, it's why she won't drink whiskey. She won't drink whiskey. Yeah. Uh, and or it's, rum. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she had two bad experiences and yeah. now two categories of spirits are off limits. So uh, basically what happens is if the first time you get exposed to a spirit category, um, you overindulged, especially in an extreme way. Um, in the same way that your brain is meant to identify um, threats so that if you get into a similar situation again, you know what to do. That's called a neural pathway. And your brain will literally form a neural pathway that may be triggered by the scent of whiskey or you know just the thought of whiskey and your brain says, danger, stay away. And so that's basically what's happened to you. Uh, but you can actually uh, have a more appropriate introduction to a spirit category. Um, that would lead to a positive neural pathway. So if you're one of those individuals that, uh, you know, maybe you drank a whole, you know, fifth of Jack Daniels at a party when, when you were young and now you think you hate all whiskey, you might try a more appropriate introduction and see if your brain can push past it. What are you, what are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm testing my new whiskey glass that I had designed. Why? Well, there's a company out there that's a real Karen, hmm. and she threatened to sue us. Really? You yeah. Don't say. Yeah. So we had been producing some traditional tulip shape whiskey glasses. Oh yes. Uh huh. We never used the name. Right. Of course. But they claimed to own the shape of the glass. Mm hmm. And since I'm just a little guy, I couldn't fight. Right. But do you know what that motivated us to do, Wes? What? To go out and design a glass that was actually made for high-proof American spirits. So the company that had the problem with us, their glass was originally designed for low-proof scotch whiskey. Oh, okay. 80, yeah. 86 proof, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And you know what I had noticed? Every time I would 
knows a really high proof, high quality Ooh. spirit in the United States. Yeah. Out of this glass, all I got was ethanol. Yeah, burn. a little burn there. I felt that. And so we went out and we designed this glass that's actually designed for those higher proof spirits. And I'm so confident in this glass that if anybody were to go to our website and buy one, I'm offering a money back guarantee. Wow. If you get that glass to your house and you find yourself one of these traditional tulip shaped glasses and you know a high proof spirit side by side and you can't tell the difference, I will gladly give you your money back. So what you're saying is they can really stick it to the Karen and mm -hmm. support the little guy by mm -hmm. going to bourbonrealtalk.com and ordering one of these with absolutely no risk. They could get their money back if they don't prefer it, nosing it to the other. Absolutely. Okay. And if you love small business and you like sticking it to Karen's, that's the way to go. Stick it to Karen, bourbonrealtalk.com. Cheers. What do we got uh, next? What's the next reason that somebody may hate whiskey? You know, I think a lot of people think that good whiskey is just too expensive. Yeah. And so I've had a number of friends of mine who have said, like, I used to love bourbon, but all of my favorite whiskeys that I used to just be able to walk in and grab off the shelf, you know, people are chasing down trucks to try and get them and I can't all find what I want. Can't, yeah. And so they've just decided I'm, I'm giving up. Right, uh, I'm 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 gonna switch to scotch, or I'm gonna switch to rum or tequila. And a lot of people have skipped spirit categories because they're 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 just frustrated with all the hype, right? Uh, but there's also a category of people that they're they're more collectors, mm -hmm. and so they'll go out and do the research to see like what does everybody love, right? And then they go, well, I have to go get what everybody else wants so that I can, you know, not miss out on this, this is experience. The, like this if is, I'm doing whiskey, I have to get this thing. This thing. Yeah. And when they can't find it, they get frustrated and give up. And so what what we would recommend is that people do some blind tastings. And what should that help them identify if they're tasting their whiskey blind? Um, what kind of flavors you like? What kind of profile you like? What kind of proof you like? Yeah, because the, the reality of the situation is, is that there's tons of readily available, super high quality whiskey out there. And so you need to go out and taste things blind and not have that, that FOMO influencing your experience and identify what you really love. And I guarantee you, if you do that, you're going to be able to find readily available products that you love and you'll be able to experience whiskey along with everybody else. Yeah. Um, I mean, we keep it like a handle of Wild Turkey 101 all the time. Like it's it's not super expensive. Right. It's yummy. Anyway. So what's the next reason somebody may hate whiskey? You know, a lot of people say that it, it just burns. Ah! It, yes. Yeah. The the, uh, the burn means it's working, right? Like, <laughs> I I mean I the, I I like higher proof spirits. I I like the burn, but it's not for everyone. Yeah, and so uh, this is something that's very common among individuals that try to switch from like beer or a lower proof alcohol mm -hmm. into spirits. Um, it, it's it also, in my opinion, um, that transition sometimes leads to overindulgence because. They're just not used to the fact that what they would normally drink in a 12 ounce serving, they're getting the same amount of ethanol in a one and a half or a two ounce serving. Sure. So they consume too much, that can be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, but also their palate's just not used to that higher proof. And so um, it's pretty easy uh, to develop some techniques to acclimate your palate. So first of all, whenever you have a pour of a spirit, don't take a big, drink of it. Yeah, right off the rip you need to acclimate your palate and the way I do it which you know may be unconventional it's a little bit like when a sommelier or somebody who's you know tasting a wine they swish it across their entire palate um, you're you're actually not supposed to swish whiskey because there's some science that shows that the, the disturbance of the whiskey um, does something to the alignment of the flavor molecules and you may experience something that's a little bit different but when you first get a little bit of a spirit in your mouth, it's a good idea to allow your palate to acclimate to it. So take a little bit of si a little bitty sip, get it on your tongue, let it run down the sides, give your mouth a chance to acclimate to that and take a couple bigger and bigger sips. And at some point you may want to swish it around to coat your whole palate. 
and then you'll be warmed up and ready to pay attention and you know try and see what it is that you're actually tasting underneath uh, when you do do take a sip um, and again just like uh, with the other recommendations you can work your way into higher proofs um, so that it doesn't burn as much you can uh, experiment with some finished options, mm -hmm. uh, which we have a couple of finished options we're going to talk about here. Those can be a little bit sweeter and can make your palate not focus on the burn so much. Obviously, cocktails, ice, and water mm -hmm. um, are a good idea there. And uh, last, but certainly not least, what is the last reason why some people may hate whiskey? They just don't like the flavor. And that is a legit reason yeah. uh, um, to not like the whiskey. So, uh, as my favorite rapper, J, J. Cole, says, uh, everything ain't for everybody. <laughs> In all fairness, he did not say that. Um, his his uh, high school sweetheart said that to him mm -hmm. when he invited her to move to L.A. to live the you know famous lifestyle. Yeah. And she said, look, I know it sounds like a real great offer to you, but everything ain't for everybody. And that's probably true about whiskey as well. Um, so... You have to, I have to hold space in my heart for people who are just not ever going to like the flavor. Sure. <laughs> and, and that's totally okay. So what do you say that we give away some whiskey? Let's do it. All right. So since we're talking about easing your way in, I kind of went through the shelves and I picked out a number of whiskeys that I know are pretty common entry level whiskeys for people to get started on. So over here we have the Basil Hayden Dark Rye. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the rye whiskey, but they put a little bit of uh, rum in it, I believe. Okay. Um, and so it tastes like a rum finished rye. Then we have Maker's 46. This one's mm -hmm. interesting because it goes through a secondary stave finishing process. And those staves are toasted in parts a lot of sweet chocolatey flavors. So okay. some people like that. And then tell them about your uh, whistle pig. Man, I, this is what I'm drinking now. I I love this whiskey. So um, it's a um, I mean it's a rye obviously because it's whistle pig. Uh, but the Alpha Roma they, they did a um, a special. Um, addition for the F1 racing team, the Alfa Romeo. And they, they actually had a team of people that, that they, you know, all worked together on it. Um, I, there, I forget the, the finishing. It's, it's a tea and lychee or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's a, um, with lychee and tea barrel finish. So yeah. it's, it's steeped in a tea barrel. Anyway, it's, it, so it has a lot of the, like, um, the, the the citrusy notes from the lychee or lychee or however you want to say lychee, it I've lychee. seen it I've seen it both ways, um, but it's got a little bit of and I like I I always think it's so funny that I'm drawn to whiskeys like this because I don't actually drink tea yeah, I, right. I hate tea um, but I, I I guess I love it in whiskey so this is one of my favorites I'll and, be very sad and then the 1792 here. small batch yeah. last but not least quintessential basic bourbon flavor slightly lower proof. Easily available, really inexpensive. So we're going to give out, there's going to be four winners this time. Oh, wow. So we're going to give a one-ounce sample pack of each of these four whiskeys. And uh, if you're already an experienced whiskey drinker, you already had these, then use them to, to expose someone new to whiskey. Yeah. Uh, but it'll, it'll, we think it'll be fun to give you some starter pack whiskeys out there. Um, and maybe you hate whiskey and you watch this and you're like, all right, I'll give it a shot. Give it a shot. Yeah. So to enter the win, the giveaway, all you have to do is like this video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, which will give you notifications of future content. And every piece of content has a free giveaway in it. So you'll want to know when they come out. Um, and then most importantly, you have to fill out the web form that's in the video description below. It'll give us your basic information. We'll run a randomizer. Once the right person is picked, we will reach out to that individual and get your shipping information and get your samples out to you for free. So why don't you tell them how they can support the channel? Well, we've got our Patreon, like we mentioned earlier. Um, we've got lots of tiers, so there's something for um, every budget. But right. um, what's more than that is that we've got so many good things. We try to make sure that it's not... Um, you know, the kind, like we're not just trying to ask for money and not give anything back. We right. really worked hard to try to make sure that each of the tiers have really, um, you know, cool benefits like um, distillery takeovers, barrel picks, um, you know, 
in person meetups, yeah. virtual meetups, discounts on merch. There's a lot of great stuff. So yeah. there's a link in the video description below to check that out. You can also check out our merch site at bourbonrealtalk.com. All of the merchandise there was uh, designed and sourced by Lindsay, um, and, and so was the website. I think it's neat. Um, and so that's really cool, and we've got something for everybody. If you love whiskey, you're going to find things that you can't live without over there. And then my real estate business has been supporting this channel since its inception, so if you need residential real estate services in the Dallas or Houston metro areas, you could support the channel by giving me a call, interviewing me to see whether or not I'd be a good agent option for you. And if this is your first time tuning into the show, we'd like to tell you a little bit about our show philosophy. We are all about bringing people together around spirits. And that's something that's important to us because we lost my younger brother to suicide in 2014. And in the aftermath, we looked into different ways that we could get involved and maybe make a difference in somebody else's life. And um, in the end, uh, we kind of had to make our own path. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I saw was whiskey was bringing people together. And I saw that my brother was losing some of those social connections that kept him anchored to this world. And I thought, maybe if I can get you connected to whiskey, whiskey will do the rest of the job mm -hmm. and get you connected to others. And so we started this channel. We also started Bourbon Real Talk Community, which is a free Facebook-based whiskey enthusiast forum that has no trolls in it. Uh, there's not going to be anybody trying to, you know, make you feel stupid because of what you like or what you posted over there. And that's very important for connection. Um, and we knew we needed to do that because there are a lot of trolls online in the whiskey enthusiast world and other forums as well. And it's just individuals that are showing hate to strangers online. Uh, but they taught us something valuable. And that is if those people can hate a stranger online, there's nothing that keeps us from loving a stranger online. And that's why we end every show the same way, and that's this. If you woke up this morning and you're unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that we, we love, love you. you. And we'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. Cheers. of what you have on your e-commerce site. I'm your host, Randy Sullivan. Let's get right to the questions. Do you have Glen toppers? Yes. Do you have t-shirts? Yes. Do you have bottle carrying bags? Yes. Do you have storage? Yes. Do you have an aroma kit? Yes. People, we have everything at bourbonrealtalk.com. This is stupid. Why do we even need a game show?